You see the stick? <laughs> Mental health issues in professional sport. It's a big talking point these days. For the first time ever, professional athletes are actively being encouraged to open up about what mental health issues they might have faced competing at the top level, rather than it being stigmatised. Is enough actually being done to combat these pressures? And can exercise itself be a form of therapy to these athletes? How important is mindset training in not only performing to the best of your ability, but to be able to survive at the top level? I spoke to Team GB Olympic bronze medalist and European and world champion Eve Muirhead. Besides competing in the sport you love, why do you take part in physical activity? I think like physical activity is really important for, for every human being. Um, from a young age, I wasn't pushed into anything, which I think is really, really important for a lot of young people. And my parents always supported me whatever I chose to do. And through school, I took part in, in every single sporting activity I could. And I was really competitive at it. Like I never, ever wanted to lose. So from a young age I knew that I think that was along the, the lines of what I wanted to do and even during school there was a lot of, um, not bullying, that's not the right word, but a lot of people who didn't agree with what you did and it just wasn't a cool thing to do but like for me now I'm, I'm glad I kind of carried on doing what I wanted to do and I look back and I think that I could have made a lot of different decisions but for me moving forward I realised that sport was something that I wanted to be involved in. What pressures have you had to deal with as a pro athlete and what do you do to alleviate these? As a pro athlete there is um, a lot of pressures that come with it and for me especially the position I play within my team being the captain like I play the shots that either win you games, win you tournaments but I also play the shots that lose you games and lose you tournaments so there is a lot of pressure that comes with being the skip of a curling team as well just generally curling when your name's kind of out there you always have pressures on your shoulders and especially within Scotland being the top team you're always expected to do well and, and that makes it tough and if I just take you even back to last week we were competing in the Continental Cup which is a little bit like the, the Ryder Cup of curling so it wasn't just Team Muirhead, it wasn't just Team Scotland, like we were Team Europe. So there were six teams and um, you're competing for all of those six teams and it came down to the very last game and fortunately for me I played the shot that, that won us the Continental Cup and um, I've never ever been so nervous. <laughs> it was probably the most nervous I'd ever been because you didn't want to let all those guys down. You didn't want to let down the kind of nations that, that were there competing. And, you're there with a, a jam-packed stadium, there's thousands of people watching you, it, it's streamed live throughout the world on TV and um, for me that was the biggest pressure situation apart from the Olympics I think I've been in and, and it was mental and as soon as you play that shot and, and you win like and you win for the, for the countries is something really special. So you mentioned some of the highs there, another high was winning a bronze medal in the 2014 Winter Games. What sort of pressure was there on you to perform just as well in the 2018 games? Going into Pyeongchang in 2018, there was a lot of pressure. And I think not just pressure that we put on ourselves, but pressure that, that everyone puts on you. And every year, not just curling, but every sport, every sport is um, getting better and better. And it's becoming harder and harder to be at the top of these sports. Like Every nation is always at your heels and every nation is is getting better in, in different areas and for us getting the medal in, in Sochi 2014 obviously was massive, it gave, gave us a huge huge boost and um, it put our names out there, not just in Britain but throughout the world as well and, and then to get selected for Pyong 2018 it came with lots of pressures and to come away with fourth um, 
was it was probably the hardest defeat of my career so far. Like it was it was brutal. It was it was really really hard. And um, if if that doesn't hurt getting fourth in Olympic games, like I, I don't know what does. <laughs> but the pressure is something that you have to learn to deal with. Like it's something that that for me you get every day. Um, with with different things that you do from training um, to, to gym work to to just being just being out there and, and keeping fit because you want to get better everything you do you want to PB at you want to be the best you can because because you know the rest of your competitors are doing exactly the same so yeah of course it was disappointing but I think over time you learn how to deal with pressures and I think as an athlete that's something that you have to do is learn how to deal with it there's a well publicised story about Rebecca Wilson, another Team GB athlete, who opened up about self-harming at the 2014 Winter Games in order to cope with the pressures. Do you think this is actually more common than we think? And are mental health issues covered up in sport? Yeah, I, um, it was interesting to, to read that story at the Games and I think it most definitely is something that is a lot more common than the general public think. And from being an athlete, I can see how it's always it's always going to be an issue, and I think it's something that people now begin to realise that there is an issue there, and um, there's a lot more help available. And I think being an athlete, you don't want to open up because you're you're embarrassed to. You you feel like. There's, there's a lot of pressures on you to perform and do well, but of course when that doesn't go well, um, there's lots of downs as well. But I think over time, people are beginning to realise that it's an area that, that happens a lot within professional sport. And um, I take my hat off her to, to her for opening up. Like I think that was a very brave thing to do. And um, I think going forward, it's maybe, it's maybe kind of opened the public's eyes that um, when you are there in the stage, when you are competing at high level sport, the pressures are massive and at the end of the day like we are just normal human beings and we're just trying to do the best for ourselves and, and do the best for our sports. The government has issued a statement that there needs to be a clear mental health strategy in place for all professional teams by 2024. How important is this? I think it's very important that there is help available and I think with the government um, putting that statement forward, it maybe takes a little bit of pressure off each athlete's back. And I think knowing that help's available is something that's very valuable. And I know here in Scotland, we're always urged to speak about it. And we're always urged to kind of open up and, and speak about everything that's going on as much as we can. So people are aware that maybe help is needed or maybe just to keep an eye on certain people or, or just different things like that. But I think um, moving forward, it's definitely in a better place. And I think the biggest task is when, when athletes retire. You have so much pressure on your backs competing at a high level and then suddenly you're like finished, finished like that. And it's, um, I can't imagine for myself what it'd be like um, finishing. Like every day I'm in the gym, every day I'm practicing on ice and away competing and then suddenly, suddenly it stops. And I can imagine that being very tough. You have struggled with a serious injury this season. What effect does that have on your mental health and what have you done to come back from this? Like I'll be honest, I've had the worst summer ever. Like it, it's been awful. From coming fourth in the Olympic Games to being on the table getting serious hip surgery. Um, like it, it's been tough. I, like I was literally home from the Olympics for a week and then I was I was getting operated on. So it's it's been really tough but I think the help that's available for me has been second to none. Like, I'm, I've been aware that I've spoken up about it and um, I've asked for help when I've needed it. So for me as an athlete, getting the surgery was needed, but I think the help that I've received since to get me back to where I am is, is something that's kind of invaluable. And um, I think every athlete that goes through injury, you can realise how tough it is and how tough it is to get back to the top of your game. And it's not just getting back to, to sport, I think it's getting back to where you finished off. Like you wanna be just as good, don't you? Or if, if not better, but you've gotta climb back up to there. So for us, like our season has been slow at the start. Um, we maybe haven't won as many games, as many tournaments as what we'd have wanted to. But I think you've gotta look at the big picture. And for me, it's looking at the, the the next three years, like it's the next Olympic Games that I want to be fit for, 
but being as competitive as I am, like I want to be good every day. <laughs> so that's where it's tough and that's where you've got to put everything into perspective and, and that's where the help's there when you need it. How important is a positive mindset and mental toughness when playing professional sport and what role does this play in performing to the best of your ability? Like I think a, a positive mindset is really important. Um, if you're negative, like you're never going to get back to where you want to be. You've got to have ambition and you've got to have drive to be back even better. And like I've worked my socks off to get back to where I am. Like I'm actually lucky to be back on nice competing right now. Um, I spend a lot of time rehabbing. Like I spend two, three times a day doing rehab things and. Believe you me, it's no fun. Like It is the most boring thing ever. But if I want to get back to where I want to be, you've got to do it. And you see, see it within a lot of sports that um, injury is common, but people don't realise like what it takes to get back to where you are. And when there's pressures on you to, to perform just as well or even better than, than where you left off, it's important that, that people realise that that's where tough times come from. But you've got to speak up if you need help, and that's exactly what happened. Why should people with mental health issues look to exercise as a form of therapy? Like for me, when I'm away competing, or even just at home, like I'll go and work out, and it's maybe not to get better at what I do, but it's more to switch off from, from every day. It's more to switch off from, from what's constantly going through your mind about competing or about your sport and it's just a way of um, a way of kind of relaxing and, and enjoying a different aspect of life and I think that's really really important that that people understand that and within my team all of us have certain things that we like to do to switch off and you've just got to respect that and I think for for general people like exercise is something that that really does help to kind of change your mindset and give you a little bit of drive and I actually think it's a little bit addictive as well. So I think if if someone has um, has an issue or if something's happening within mental health, like to get to get into fitness, to get into gym work, like there could be a lot worse things. So I think that's really important that people realise that you've got to respect why people do it. There's obviously all different kind of abilities maybe taking part, but each individual is for different reasons and you've got to respect that. Now that you're fighting fit, what are your goals for the rest of 2019? Well for 2019 we're kind of midway through our season already which is, is quite scary. Um, we have our Scottish Championships coming up which is um, that's really important not just to secure our spot in the World Championships but for our, our funding as well going forward. So we'll be training hard for the next few weeks leading into that and then fingers crossed we'll the world. Um, and then a few Grand Slam events. So really this season's been a season of kind of finding our feet again after last year and um, to try and qualify ourselves for a few big events and then moving forward obviously the Olympics in 2022 is the next big goal.